Okay, hello friends, followers, and supporters from all over the world. This is Malik Kenworthy and Sister Zeph with Zephania Free Education and Women's Empowerment Foundation. Uh, we are making this video today in, in order for me to ask Sister Zeph some very important questions uh, regarding her work and her center. Um, I have been working with Sister Zeph for almost three years now, and I want to discuss the challenges, the successes, the short-term goals, the long-term goals, as well as how you can help with the organization. So, how are you doing today, Sister Zeph? I'm fine. Yeah? Okay, so I have some questions for you. Um, when it comes to the work that you do, why do you do the work that you do for the women and the children in your community? Um, because I think this is a goal of my life. And why I feel it, this is a goal of my life, because I have seen a lot of suffering of women and children and young girls in my society. They have to go through a lot every day. They don't have even their basic rights. They don't um, know, um, they cannot give their opinion on anything. They cannot uh, choose their life partner. They cannot have a right to education. And they have to suffer for small things. Even when I was a three years old girl, my own uncle, my father's younger brother, tried to kill me because I am a girl and we are four sisters. And he uh, thinks that girls are a burden for the family. And then uh, the girls have to face discrimination on every level. In my society, they say that women don't have a house uh, because first they live in the father and brother's house and then they live in husband's house. So you can imagine that how important it uh, was for me to uh, be a change, to change all those lives. That's why I do it. And was there any event that happened in your life that was like a catalyst for the work that you do? As I told you before, I have been facing um, so many issues like this um, since my birth. But um, there was an incident when I was in seventh standard and I had to uh, face uh, discrimination and uh, um, uh, abuse by my own teacher and that was the incident which uh, um, just um, made me realize that I have to change everything I have to change the education system where they will, they will be respect for the student and the students will be treated with love and care so uh, from there I started working with the girls and then when I started knowing their stories how they are living their lives um, I decided to devote my life for this goal for, and for this purpose. So how, what are some ways that you are affecting lives in your community and that you're empowering and uplifting these women? Can you give me some examples? Yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, um, I want to tell you, as you know, that we are working since 20 years. I was a little girl since uh, when I opened the school in the courtyard of my house. And uh, we uh, give them 12 years free education. And also, we teach them skills like um, um, uh, they become professional beauticians, they become tailors, and um, we have a, a library here where they uh, read books and they learn about the lives of women. You are teaching them art. Uh, it's been more than two years. And there are our overseas friends who teach them, like our, our friend uh, Michelle from USA, she teaches them um, um, uh, self-defense techniques. Yes, uh, because of her teaching self-defense, there was a young girl that was saved from kidnapping. Yes, uh, it happened in uh, September. And uh, uh, then um, there are uh, our friends from India and Europe who teach them science or math and... Um, Australia? Uh, yes and uh, um, they, they help us online also they teach them blogging and peace building and um, as i told you self-defense techniques and teach them science and math and uh, geography and many other subjects 
So, uh, uh, and uh, we are teaching them uh, not only skills and education, but we teach them self-defense techniques also so that they can protect themselves. As you just gave the example that how a girl, how one of our students of ninth standard, she saved herself from uh, being kidnapped because of her self-defense techniques. Yeah. So what can you tell me about, before we talk about the successes of the organization, can you tell me about some of the challenges that like, you don't have to tell me, I know that there are many challenges, but can you just give me a few examples of the challenges that you face? Well, uh, there are uh, many ch challenges, um, as you know. Uh, first of all, the big, very big challenge is that we have to struggle a lot every month to meet our basic needs, like the salaries of our staff and utility bills, and um, we have to buy stationery and uniform and school bags and shoes for the children, like now winter has started and uh, um, there are some children who uh, we have to buy uh, warm clothes, we have to buy them sweaters and shoes and um, uh, socks and all uh, 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 those things and uh, there are some uh, challenges from the society also. As you know that I was um, uh, attacked by gunmen in 2006 and 2013 and now again we have uh, threats and we have a very big issue, uh, the security issue. We really need uh, to hire security guards. We really uh, need to uh, uh, be protected uh, because um, um, when you visited Pakistan, you have seen that we have uh, um, at least 100 students at a time in the center. So uh, I think uh, um, uh, we really need the security, otherwise anything can happen to the children anytime. Okay, so can you tell me, you were telling me earlier about some children that recently joined your center, and I want you to give the story about them and what they're going through, and in order for people to fully realize, like, ground realities of what's happening over there. Actually, I want to uh, give you two um, uh, very quickly two examples. One example of Aisha, who is your student also. Mm -hmm. uh, she and her six uh, um, uh, uh, sisters have to leave the school because Aisha, she's 18 years old, and she uh, talked to a man on phone, and her father came to know about it. And now seven of the girls uh, uh, had to leave the school. I have requested their father to send them back, but he's not agreed on that. And you know that one of our students, uh, she was killed in January uh, 2017 because she also talked to a to a man, so now I'm very much scared for uh, uh, for her security and for her sisters. And uh, then um, uh, today, three children have joined our school, two uh, little girls and uh, one boy. Uh, they are six, five, and four years old. Their mother had to leave uh, them with other, two other children because of uh, uh, physical and mental torture. And they are living with their father, and their father is doing nothing. And these little children, um, uh, they work in the houses. Uh, they throw their garbage, they clean their houses, and those people uh, uh, are, their humanity has dead, uh, absolutely dead, because they give them food and they don't allow them to enter to their houses and sit and eat with them, but they ask them to uh, uh, take this uh, food and go outside and sit on the road and eat it. Uh, but luckily, one of our students came to know about uh, about it and uh, about it, and she has got them in the center, and we have given them admission. But now we need uh, books and uniform and uh, stationery and shoes and sweater okay. and everything for them. Well, yeah. I have some questions regarding that. So you're telling me there are some children that are like four and six years old, and they're living with their father who was doing nothing for them and their mother left. The Why did their mother leave? Like, uh, because uh, of physical and mental torture given by their father uh, to so, her. And she just okay, so their father, does their father torture the children? Yes, uh, he uh, does not only torture them, but he uh, asked them to work and they work and uh, um, he sits at the home. But he's allowing them to go to your school. Uh, it was very difficult uh, to convince him, but we have convinced him, and we have given that, uh, given him this uh, uh, surety that we will fulfill all the expenses of their education, and also we will give them food. 
Okay, so now it's up to you to not only provide education for them, but to make sure that they're not starving to death and that they're not going to freeze in the winter time because their father yes. does nothing, their mother left, and so you're you're not only providing education for people over there, you're you're helping clothe and feed some of the children as well. Yes. Okay. Well, just for time's sake, uh, let's move on, even though I know that that's like, that's very a difficult subject. What are, can you give some examples of successes of the organization? Yes, yes. I can. Um, I can um, uh, tell you about the many of women who have their own beauty salons, who are working as professional tailor masters, uh, they are working in many organizations. They are supervisors, they are HR managers, they are nurses, teachers, they are healthy mothers, and uh, they have their own small businesses at home. Our students are university and college students, and uh, they have high dreams, and they are getting professional mm -hmm. degrees. Like uh, your student, Taiba, she has just completed her bachelor's, and uh, uh, she wants to be uh, an air hostess. And then um, uh, Aisha is also your student. She wants to uh, join the police uh, department because she wants to protect the women. Uh, and she thinks that uh, if uh, there should be more women in the police department also so that uh, uh, they can help uh, other women. Uh, so uh, these are uh, some examples. We have plenty of examples. Okay, and what are, can you go over some short-term and long-term goals of the organization? Well, uh, for the short time, um, we need, um, um, because we don't have any regular funding and we uh, uh, depend on the crowdfunding. So um, we need uh, at least uh, $2,000 a month to pay the salaries of our staff, to pay the utility bills, to buy stationery and other stuff for the children and to uh, feed some of them. And uh, second, um, I want to tell about uh, our uh, Christmas uh, show where uh, around uh, four to 500 people will be coming and children will play a drama in which they are going to tell them this time that uh, if parents uh, uh, fight with each other and they beat their children, how their, their future can be ruined, the future of the children. and. Uh, this is uh, this is our 20th annual show and we need um, uh, everything for this show. We need gi Christmas gifts for the children, the costumes, and uh, we need to pre prepare everything for the show along with the dinner. And um, uh, we need security immediately. We need security guards. And mm -hmm. for one security guard, we have to pay at least $180 uh, a month and uh, uh, for eight hours. And we need two security guards. And for the long term, uh, we need um, uh, a big school, a proper school. You have visited here and you have seen that our place is very small. And when uh, all children are sitting there, they cannot even listen each other, listen to each other. It is so much noisy. We don't have mm -hmm. windows. We don't have a playground. And uh, child we don't have uh, tables and chairs for the children. They have to sit on the floor. So uh, we need uh, a a proper school with proper security and uh, we need a hostel because uh, uh, most of the girls have to leave their studies and they cannot uh, take the trainings for the uh, uh, for the skills because they have to come every day and they cannot who are living uh, uh, far so we want the girls to stay in the hostel complete their education learn skills and go back to their villages and teach their skills and education to other girls who are living there. This okay. is our uh, long-term goal, yeah. Okay, so short-term, I'm gonna reiterate this so everybody can understand. Uh, you need $2,000 a month, or basically it costs $24,000 a year to run the school and to educate hundreds of students and to pay all the teacher salaries I think that that's very realistic uh, to, you know, in order to get funding to support that, I think $24,000 a year for a school that empowers like hundreds of women and children a year is very realistic. And I just want everyone to know that there are 11 teachers at the school and in order to just to support one teacher, it's only $55 a month. 
So I just think that, um, just hold on one minute. Oh, okay. I just got a notification that uh, the fundraiser that I started on Facebook for Christmas is approved. So uh, <laughs> I just want everyone to know that our short-term goal right now is to complete funding for the Christmas show for 2017. And this is important mainly for the children. Every year they, they put on a show, and like Riffit said, the show is raising awareness about how conflict between parents and family members is detrimental um, for the lives of children. And especially over there, like in Pakistan, there's a lot of domestic violence, even more so than America, for example. So this show is very important for many reasons. It, it makes the children feel special. It gives them an opportunity to perform. It gives them an opportunity to send a message to their community about what's important to them. And it also, it, it also gets the community together and it creates unity because it's not only Christians that go to this, it's Christians and Muslims together that are a part of this. So really like anything that you can do, any contribution is a huge deal. And then I also want to ask you, um, what are different ways that people can help with the organization? Uh, we not only um, uh, need financial support, but we need uh, their support uh, to um, spread our message, to be our voice, and uh, we need people to join us, uh, to work with us. We need people to help us uh, um, on um, what is that uh, because girls have so many stories so we if somebody knows Urdu and English uh, I would request them to join us and uh, translate their blog so that m many people uh, can listen to their stories and read their stories and uh, uh, we want uh, uh, people to uh, join us in um, uh, in paperwork and all the uh, for the back end support who can join us as volunteers and uh, they really need technical support and all that. Okay. So, so uh, there are many ways in, um, in which they can help us. Okay. So basically, if you are unable to donate to the school, we, we need people also that to help us spread our message and to help us with marketing and fundraising. And fundraising doesn't mean that you just give money to us. It means that you're telling other people, your groups and other groups about us and what we do. And also, uh, we're building a new website for the school. And as you know, a website is very labor intensive. And uh, Rithit, she, she wants to share the stories of what the girls go through and the children go through over there, but they have to write in Urdu. So if you know Urdu and English and you can help us translate, that would be a huge help. Um, and if you can help us like, you know, with our posting on social media, because we not only have Facebook, but we have Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. So if you could help us with social media and like the website and marketing, fundraising, like, just please let us know. You can message me directly or you can message with it. Um, so I think for now, like, that's basically everything we wanted to go over. And uh, thank you for watching this amazing interview and uh, continue to follow us. And thank you so much for everything. Thank you.